go on to your four-year university. And I guess we'll, maybe we'll just go start with Aisa first, and then the second question will start with myself. So. Can I actually start in the opposite direction? You want to start? <laughs> <laughs> Repeat the question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, which aspects of your Middlesex education best prepared you for your four-year university? Okay. Uh, I believe that my honors classes actually prepared me best. And so part of the Commonwealth Honors Program is having to take certain kinds of seminars. I'm sure most of you know. Um, and I had to take three of them, I believe, as a requirement in order to graduate with honors. And those classes just kind of stepped it up as compared to the normal Middlesex classes. And I found that at my four-year institution, that was really kind of the norm for the classes, especially the papers they had to write at the end. And so, you know, when you're looking at a 20-page paper as compared to a normal, you know, Middlesex class, it's, you know, kind of abnormal. It, it's something that most classes do not do, whereas most classes at Clark University do do that. That's a normal thing. Uh, to be fair, and I do need to mention that Clark University classes are four credits per class, whereas middle six are three credits, but at the same time, that, that did help step me up to that. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, again, Dr. Toomey, because when I was in high school, I had zero help from anyone, and I did not think I was going to be going on to college at all because I was just completely discouraged. And so, I mean, I, I wouldn't be here without him, and um, I, 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 everything, all these questions, I looked at him ahead of time and I said, everything is because of that man, because <laughs> um, I would definitely say also Dr. Toomey, just, mm -hmm. just putting that out there now. <laughs> But I think, you know, communication with your advisor and knowing what um, what your major is and what classes you're taking from Middlesex into UMass Lowell also plays a huge role. Because once I took a lot of classes at Middlesex that were required that I had to take into UMass Lowell, I looked at this sheet that, you know, required classes I had to take. Most of my general ed education requirements had been completed already alone in Middlesex. So it makes my life a little bit easier, I would suppose, <coughs> if um, doing all the psych required courses that I have to do so I can focus more time on that. So I did all my general courses in Middlesex and now I'm focusing more on my major in UMass Lowell. Um, well, I, I have a little bit of a different story. I haven't had the pleasure to know. Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I took the five-year break when I went to the military, um, and, and I wasn't a very good high school student, uh, didn't really apply myself. Um, and so for me, um, it was a lot about, um, a lot about foundation. I, you know, I remember my one-on-one class um, of uh, English 101, uh, Miss Martin, um, and she really helped me out a lot, but, it, but I think just generally speaking, encouragement. I mean, I wouldn't be at Tufts if it wasn't for uh, my uh, advisor, Dr. Pride, um, I had I had never even thought about an institution like that, and um, you know, I, I, because I just wasn't a good high school student, I, I never really had academic success, and um, and she really pushed me into into trying to, to go for it, and, and I made it. So um, I really think uh, you know the encouragement um, and, and my I had a great advisor, and um, and and a lot of the, like the foundation classes really helped me. Uh, I get where I am, so. I agree with what's been said so far. The honors classes is definitely, um, it, it's still not the same level, I would say, <coughs> as like a course that we would take um, at one of these universities, but it definitely gets closer. Um, the advisors, absolutely, the transfer advisors were magical. They were really helpful. Applying for financial aid. Um, I'm a first generation college student, so I knew nothing. <laughs> And so going into the office, um, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? That was really good. Um, student activities office, surprisingly enough, um, the connections I made there with a lot of the leadership team, um, student government, and all, I could always go to them and be like, hey, what's the best school to apply for for my program? What can I do? So I think knowing everybody who's, who, who, yeah, just people like that, like advisors and, yeah. Okay, so now <clears throat> we want to know what, what all of us in this room, uh, what Middlesex can do to better prepare our students for, to make that move from the two-year to the four-year school. And so, anybody want to start? Do you want to start? Yeah, uh, sure. 
So I two things immediately popped up for me when I thought of what Middlesex might be able to do better as far as my own experiences, and one of them was actually transfer advising. And so for me, my transfer advising experience was not as good, and I don't know of, I didn't get to speak to any other Middlesex students that transferred to Clark, so I didn't, I wasn't able to kind of connect with them. Uh, when I did ask for help, they just kind of gave me a broad list, like make sure you just meet deadlines, make sure that this happens, make sure that that happens, and all that was already in my mind. I was looking for some something a little bit more personal as far as either with the advisor or with the college, you know, something to really kind of help me, pull me along, because I personally I did not know quite what to do and to meet all the deadlines. Uh, that was my first major thing, and so that kind of, especially because transferring between fall and spring, that's a very tight deadline, and so mm -hmm. having to get all that in, that would have been very, very helpful to have someone kind of lead me along. Uh, second thing that I would say is kind of clubs and the organizations. And so I know that Middlesex being kind of a commuter college is harder to kind of get their interest for, for clubs and those kinds of student-run organizations. I tried to get as involved as I could in about my last semester and my last year, uh, but I think that that's, I, I don't know if that there's some kind of like online hub or you know resource to kind of see what clubs are active or club registration or see you know, how a student might go about creating a club or connect with other students if they would want to create a club. That was something that I wanted to create a club, but unfortunately I didn't feel as though I had support, I suppose, the same kind of surprise that I wanted to. So, so I think that some kind of like online hub or something might, might go a long way for students to connect to each other. I would say probably a little more reaching out in terms of exposing and really showing off MCC because MCC compared to the community college I have where I'm from in Fall River is like the Ivy League of community <laughs> colleges. And it's, it's really impressive. There's no, almost all of the classes that you can take at MCC transfer somewhere. And the classes that the community college where I'm from is you have to ask and even when you ask them what classes do transfer, they don't give you a lot of information. So. I would say, if, depending on where it is, like I've been trying to get, for a little while now, trying to find a way to get MCC down towards Fall River in the south part of Massachusetts where you can branch out more because a lot of the students from my high school, they've had the, they're having the same experience I'm having, I had of being discouraged from the guidance counselors of all jobs. <laughs> um, and or not having the proper financial position to go to college. Whereas if you go to MCC, you'll find all these outlets that have scholarship opportunities or transfer low connections. And if MCC had just branched out a little more and to the rest of the part of Massachusetts, you'd probably have a lot more students going. And I would that's probably what I would say, just branching out more. A lot of students would benefit from it. Um, I would say, Something that we looked upon would um, differentiating the difference of students in the classes specifically because there's always going to be the students who do want to go to UMass and then there's students who want to get the associate's degree and you know, maybe get a job and henceforth. With the UMass low students, it's like, no, I have to move on and henceforth. So they want to put 100% focus in the class that they are now so they don't have to work as hard or later in their lives. If they want to, okay, fine. <laughs> but if the classes, because the classes I took, you know, were all, again, general edge ed, but I felt like I could have done more in the classes, if not harder classes. I didn't take any honors classes or anything, but I didn't feel like the classes I were taking were specifically set to be for UMass Lowell. All I knew was that they were for transfer credits and stuff like that, so maybe the classes are going to be looking out towards specifically UMass or the other colleges that you know we are all going to and that's what focus on. So if it's a psychology major, what classes and what material, if that's possible, to look upon in UMass Lowell? Because I think you know if you know what you're going to see in the future, you know what's going to happen, you can be well more prepared for it. Because this last semester at psychology. I had to write a research proposal that I was not prepared for. I did good on it, but I wasn't expecting it, and I've never done anything like it before. 
So I think being more prepared for things like that would help immensely in Middlesex. Do you mind repeating the question? Sure. So, so what can Middlesex do to better prepare students for a four-year? Um, I think uh, I, I had a little bit of a problem with transferring my credits. I mean, I took a lot of classes at Middlesex, 26 to 27. Um, and Tufts only accepted maybe 15 or 16, and I had, I had to fight for a couple of them. Um, not because, um, you know, they weren't, um, I think it has to do with the amount of material. Uh, sometimes I had to ask them if, you know, if I did two classes, would you make that one class, basically? Um, and, and they would accept that. I think it was because I was bounced around a little bit with my advisors in the beginning of my um, uh, tenure at uh, MCC. And so I didn't have somebody constantly, you know, with me and, and telling me, okay, well, this is probably where you should be going. And so I kind of took like random classes here and there, and a lot of things just aren't applicable to my degree um, that I took. Um, and the other thing is, um, uh, I think I like the, the fact that uh, you know Middlesex really tries to, to help the students. I mean, you know, it's it's we're we're trying to help you learn and try to teach you study skills too. And and a lot of the teachers they put out study guides, and I think that that's a great thing. Um, but at a, a four-year institution like Tufts, you don't get a study guide, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think something that might really help is if uh, teachers try to explain how um, they derived to the things that they did in their study mm -hmm. guides to really help students be able to pick that apart themselves. You know, you want them to be able to go on to an institution and, and be able to create their own study guide because they won't get that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's something um, I needed help with, too. Again, I had the break, and, and I wasn't on a fantastic student in high school, so um, a lot of the study skills were lost with me. Um, and so I kind of had to retool, uh, relearn, that, that kind of thing, so. I think for me, um, so I going into Middlesex, I knew that I wanted to go to medical school. And I spent two years, you know, taking classes, doing really well, doing all kinds of extracurriculars that did not involve any clinical experience. And I didn't know the importance of getting clinical experience and doing internships and volunteering in hospitals. And I kind of wish I had, because then I feel like it was kind of two years that, they weren't wasted years, but they were years that I could have been volunteering and building up my resume. And so when I transferred over to BU, I had to start from my junior year, and I only have two years competing with people who have been doing clinical things for four years. And so that was the hard part for me. And this was, due, you know, as I'm taking these classes that are at a completely new level, um, because a biology course in BU is not a joke. It's a, they're tough. Um, they're really tough. And that's another um, thing for me. And so I think one improvement that I would, one suggestion that I would make for MCC is to maybe have advisors think in the long run. So maybe for people who want to go into master's programs and people who want to go to medical school or dental school. And so I feel like the advising for immediate transfer was very good. Um, you know, there's definitely <coughs> improvement, but I feel like in the really long, like down the line, going to thinking to medical school, I was completely unprepared. I had no idea. And so now I'm volunteering in three different hospitals trying to catch up, you know, <laughs> you know, you know in trying to catch up and, and stay competitive as I'm taking these really tough science courses at the same time. And it's sometimes it's a little overwhelming. And so, and then the other suggestion, and I don't know what the solution to this would be, but um, the intensity and the workload is very different. Um, and it was kind of a shocker for me. First semester was dead. <laughs> First semester was really tough. And so I didn't, I don't, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe get like, is there like some kind of advising group that we could get together for, I don't know, not specifically for science students, but something that, to teach study skills, because I had to completely revamp the way I study. So before I could get away with studying for an exam two days before, at Middlesex, you can't do that at VU. So you need to keep up with the material as you go, and you need to visit professors at office hours. And I, you know, I would love to go see Professor Quas, but that's because I love her, <laughs> you know? Um, and so I didn't feel the need to do that here at Middlesex. And um, at a four-year university, you kind of have to. Um, there's no other way to be successful and do that. And I wish I had known that going in. It would have been a smoother transition for me, I think. 